Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. Still on the um, the low tech, uh, low bandwidth devices for now. Um, should be back next week, but hopefully the sound quality is not too bad. And today I'm going to be talking about something a little different, and I've got a slightly different setup today. And I'm going to show how to use Ibis with PyTorch. And I'm using a notebook because it turned out to actually be the easiest way, I think, to demonstrate the concepts here and kind of be a little bit easier to, to follow than, than the terminal, which the code kind of tends to disappear because I'll be clearing the screen or something like that. Um, whereas here I kind of wrote everything out, made sure it worked, and now we can kind of go through it step by step. And there's not a lot of pros here, so I'm going to be adding some comments and maybe futzing with some markdown a bit to to you know take notes for myself and also illustrate illustrate some concepts here and just broadly speaking what we're going to be doing here is is try to build a uh, we're going to take sort of a, a pre-existing like linear model and we're going to try to predict um yellow cab new york city taxi cab trip data we're going to try to predict the prices uh using trip distance um, and so let's, let's dive into it. Um, so the first thing we're going to get out of the way, oh, and we're also going to be plotting at the end, uh, using a library called plot nine, which is a GG plot clone for Python. Um, it's a great library. And so we're going to be using that, uh, to, to show the, some, some fancy plots at the end. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to import some stuff. Um, we're importing IBIS data types, which we're going to use in our UDF annotations, a bunch of stuff from plot nine. We're importing the UDF uh, API from IBIS underscore operator. If you're new to the stream, check out my operator uh, underscore uh, operator replacing lambdas with underscores and then selectors. And I also have a live stream on selectors, which, which you should check out if you're unfamiliar with those. Not going to go into too much depth there. Um, underscores are a way to avoid for both lambdas and selectors, you'll see here in a second, I'm about to get into it, um, are a way of conveniently expressing kind of whole column operations or sub, you know, subsets of columns, et cetera. And then finally, I'm setting the interactive options to true. And let's just see if there's any comments on the stream so far. Okay, great. Um, no one is having a truly horrible time with the audio yet. So we'll run that <clears throat> and then uh, as I was sort of prepping the data, I noticed that as I trained the model, I would get predictions of NAN everywhere. And there were a couple of reasons. Um, there, there are some extremely large values, which um, uh, cause like sort of some of the aggregate, uh, val uh, the aggregations to become NAN. There's, um, and so uh, I did a little bit of data cleaning here to just sort of prep it so that we could, we could look at all the data. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load our data using ibis.readparquet. Uh, I'm just going to write some comments here so people can follow uh, load parquet. And then we're going to use the across selector, which is a way of saying, hey, take these two columns here or take a selector. And there's you can use lists of strings for shorthand. And then apply uh, this, this sort of underscore expression to every column that results from the selector. And if you give it a dictionary, the keys will be used as suffixes on the resulting column. So, for example, in this case, you'll get out you'll get out um, fair amount uh, z score and trip distance <clears throat> z score. And because we're using mutate. The existing th these new columns, the Z, new Z score columns, will be just tacked on uh, to the end, basically to the end of the table, and so we will keep our existing ones, which are there's a bunch in there. Um, and then we're going to filter out um, weird values, so trip distances that are negative. Somehow that's in there. Not sure how that got in there. And then there are also some negative fair amounts, which are hard to interpret. Does that mean that the taxi rider pays or the the driver pays the right like i don't know how to interpret that it sounds it's, it's strange and then 
Um, so filter out uh, negative trip distances and bizarre transactions. Uh, and then, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use this if all selector, which is not super. I haven't used this a lot in my in my streams, but it turned out to be pretty useful in this case. And and what this is saying is the, the API is uh, if all, and then you give it a selector, and then you give it a predicate that will apply. It basically will apply to every column that was selected, and then the all means and each of those. Uh, you know, filter predicates together. So in this case, it'll be, it's basically saying only keep the rows where the Z score columns uh, absolute value is less than or equal to, to two, which is going to constrain those outliers a bit. And then I only computed the, uh, the Z scores to throw out those huge or tiny values. Um, and so we drop those. So let me just add some notes here. We're going to say throw out, or rather we can phrase it in terms of the logic of the filter, only keep, keep values that are within two standard deviations. Uh, drop, and then draw, we want to drop the columns that are aren't necessary for further analysis. And then uh, select, finally we select the col only the columns that we're gonna use in our, in our model. And we're gonna use a cross again and, and torch only accepts, or it seems to only accept float 32 here uh, for inputs. Uh, I forgot to say at the outset, I'm not a machine learning expert. Um, so if there are machine learning experts who are interested in using IBIS and DuckDB and Torch, please get in touch on our issue tracker or email is fine too. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to be told uh, that we're doing things wrong and to do them the right way. So one thing to note here is I made a function here because we're going to need to apply the same set of transformations to predictions. And so, uh, so sorry, to our, 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 basically our inference input. So we've got our training data. We're training on this, this month of 2016 for yellow trip data. We're going to compute that. And of course, if you've been following streams at all, you'll, you'll know that th this computation seemingly completed instantaneously. And that's, all that is is just that IBIS is deferred. So if we try to trigger some computation, we'll see, okay, it actually, there was a little bit of latency because DuckDB had to actually do something, read a bit of the parquet, do the transfer, you know, do the, compute the Z-score, et cetera, et cetera, filter things out, uh, and we get our table here. And then uh, to avoid delving too deep uh, into the modeling aspect of this, at least for now, uh, I've sort of shoved the thing that uh, th this model here into a file, and we're going to treat it kind of like a black box. We've got a couple of APIs. One is how to construct the model, which takes the data, uh, which takes a dictionary of PyTorch tensors keyed by column names, a, a sort of a train method that's kind of entirely a black box. It doesn't take any input and it doesn't return anything. So hopefully it's not just getting the computer warm. And then we've got this, uh, we've overloaded sort of the function call operator. And that's, we're going to use the function call operator for the prediction or inference step. And what that does, and this is kind of key for how UDFs work uh, in this whole sort of assemblage of components, uh, the input here is a pi arrow chunked array. And it, in theory, it could also be an array. Um, the APIs there are, that we're using from pi arrow are, are kind of the same. And, one uh, one notable thing here. So so let me just explain this code. We're going to convert this table that we just computed above trip distance and fair amount into tor kind of a torch compatible format. And and what that is is a dictionary of strings to torch tensors. 
and that's a, that's that's sort of this is all kind of bleeding edge. This is still in PR, uh, still still pull request, uh, so it's it's not yet merged into our upstream yet. Uh, but then then well, let me just split this cell really quick. Split cell. So we're gonna we're gonna pull out the training data. That took a bit of time because DuckDB actually had to, you know, run over the whole data set, compute everything, and then return results in memory. And you'll see it's just this dictionary of, of tensors. And then we're going to initialize the model with that, and then we're going to call train. And we get a nice kind of Picatum progress bar, which is cool. And then here's sort of the meat of this whole this whole thing, which is that in I have a 6.0, we're going to have this pyro, udf.scalar.pyro, which is a decorator that lets you say, hey, I want to define a Python function, and here are, the, here are its inputs and its output type. And the, the, the inputs for this function are actually going to be pyro arrays. And I, I believe it depends on the back end, which specific kind of pyro array, but for DuckDB, we're going to get a chunked array. And then we're leveraging that that Dunder call implementation, the function call overload uh, that we implemented earlier, and we just we just call our model. Um, so let's define that, and then we're going to call clean input on our inference uh, data, and then we're only going to look at the first ten thousand because we're about to plot, and we'll be here for a while if this uh, computer tries to plot a you know a couple million points. And to our training data, uh, sorry, our test data set, we're going to add this column. Sorry, I don't know how to use a mouse. We're going to add this column, which is to call predict fair, which is our UDF, uh, given the trip distance. Now, one thing that's not quite as convenient uh, is that we don't yet have support for underscore. So, for example, I can't really, I can't write this. Um, we don't currently have a way to sort of turn the UDF expression into like a deferred expression. Um, but of course, you can use lambdas and you can also continue to, to make variables. So let's evaluate our prediction. Cool. So we invoked our PyTorch model. Uh, sorry, we trained our PyTorch model. We defined a Python UDF in, uh, well, in Python, of course. We hooked it up to IBIS with this uh, simple decorator here. Then we evaluated uh, our, our IBIS expression, uh, which, which contains a call to our UDF. And you can see we're getting predictions that look you know, somewhat reasonable. And we don't want to just evaluate somewhat reasonable. We want to actually see that we got reasonable results. And so now we, we're going to get into plotting a bit. And the thing we want to do here is that we have predictions. Um, we have the, fair, the the actual fair amount, and then we have the the, the fit, predicted fair from the model. But we kind of want to show those as two scatter plots, where you know the one the predicted fair is one color, and the fair amount is another color. And so this is really easy. This is really easy in most plotting libraries, and it's it's also easy in plot nine. But you kind of have to the mental model is a bit different. And so we're going to pivot our, our prediction table here to have, um, uh, I think, two columns we're getting out, three. We've got our trip distance still, but now we've labeled the fares with whether it's of the actual fare or the predicted fare. And then we throw, we throw sort of color equals metric, which is the name of this kind of grouping key here. And we say we basically say use the metric column to into to color the results, and then our x is trip distance and y is fair. We then say add points, give it an x label and a y label, and then a title. And we can see that we got something that looks like a linear model. Um, we've still got some funky stuff going on here. It looks like there are a bunch of $50 fares, fare amounts where I, I don't, where that, that seem to not vary with the trip distance. I don't know. Maybe those are, I don't know, maybe those are airport fares or something. I don't know. Um, 
Uh, that doesn't really make any sense either. I don't know what's going on here, but there might be something interesting. Uh, and then we've got some outrageously expensive uh, fares given the trip distance, like, I don't know, it looks like it's just like a $135 fare for going 25 miles. Um, who knows? Maybe there were some stops. I don't know. There's a bunch of interesting stuff to poke around here. Um, well, that is all for today. Hope you enjoyed the live stream. Please subscribe and I will be back. I should be back next week. I'm um, talking about.